Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends welcome to the lecture series of BSc with chemistry physical chemistry paper 4 now in our earlier lecture in this module we have seen the electrical properties of atoms and molecules from this particular lecture we will start with the magnetic properties of atoms and molecules this is lecture 6 of module 3 now friends the, we know the magnetism as very fascinating aspect this magnetism is an interesting phenomena which involves the interaction of some substance with the applied magnetic field now magnetic properties whatever they arise in the substances they arises due to the motion of electrons okay this motion of electrons is very peculiar we know that the electron has two types of motion the motion around nucleus is called as orbital motion okay so these kind of motions where you can see over here so these are called as orbital motion while when it rotates around its own axis it is called as spin motion okay so this is called as spin motion okay due to these two motions the electron they behave like a tiny magnets and the atoms containing uh, these electrons they acquire magnetism due to this kind of motions so the intensity of magnetism usually is measured in terms of magnetic moment and magnetic susceptibilities okay so the we need to see then different material they show different type of magnetic material uh, magnetic behavior and they show the magnetic susceptibility so what are the various types of magnetic behavior you can see over here the magnetic behavior the substance can be diamagnetic substance can be paramagnetic substance can be ferromagnetic substance can be ferrimagnetic and so on so we will see all of them what are these properties and how substance how and what kind of substance behaves this or exhibit this kind of nature in presence of magnetic field so when an atom is placed in between the magnetic poles the magnetic field of atom interacts with the applied magnetic field so this particular because of the motion of these electrons the atom has got particular uh, field and this particular uh, atomic field it applies uh, it interacts with the applied magnetic field and the interaction is not similar for all substances and based on these interactions these types of magnetic behavior they are classified some of them we called as diamagnetic paramagnetic ferromagnetic or ferrimagnetic isn't it so different substances they react in different manner with the applied magnetic field so the behavior of, of them they are of several type isn't it so in this particular lecture we will see what are the substances which when present which when put into the magnetic field it acts as a diamagnetic substance or it may behave as paramagnetic substance or it may behave as ferromagnetic substance or it may behave as ferrimagnetic substance so what these terminology means and what these arrows indicated over here they means let us see one by one now diamagnetism what is diamagnetism the first property that we are going to see is when we will call the particular substance as diamagnetic substance first see what is diamagnetism some substances when they are placed in magnetic field the decreases the intensity of magnetic field as compared to vacuum and such kind of substances they are called as diamagnetic substances and the phenomena of these decrease in intensity of magnetic field in uh, as compared to vacuum this phenomena is called as diamagnetism so when diamagnetic substance is placed in between the poles of magnets it repelled by the it gets repelled by the applied magnetic field and therefore the magnetic lines of force they avoid such substance they bypass such substance they do not undergo through the substance 
so diamagnetism arises when all the electrons in a substance they are paired up okay and therefore these arrow direction of these arrows they are down towards now in such case the magnetic field produced by one electron is cancelled by the other electron they are being equal and opposite and therefore the resultant magnetic moment in such cases is zero and the magnetic susceptibility of such substance is basically negative because the magnetic field is induced opposite to the direction of applied magnetic field so if this is the direction of applied magnetic field this will be the direction of generated uh, magnetic field which will be induced in such kind of substances and therefore the direction of these arrows you can see in the opposite direction to that of the direction of the applied magnetic field this is independent of temperature basically the induced magnetic moment that way is a very small is very small in this case and it is oriented in the opposite direction to the magnetic field and therefore the diamagnetism in atoms or ions or molecules it is due to the orbital motion of electrons now a simple interpretation of diamagnetism can be obtained if we imagine the motion of electrons in orbital uh, basically to constitute a current which is flowing in a coil of wire say according to lenz law when such a coil of wire is placed in a magnetic field the field induces the current so as to produce an induced magnetic field which will be acting in the opposite direction to the applied magnetic field so diamagnetism is exhibited by all types of substances whether the substance is diamagnetic or paramagnetic irrespective of that all the substances will show this diamagnetism so if the substance is paramagnetic the said diamagnetism is entirely concealed by the large value of magnetic moment of the substance and therefore the orbital motion of electrons is independent of the thermal energy it follows that the diamagnetism is independent of temperature of substance as we already said now apart from this the substance has the same value of the magnetic susceptibility where it is present in the gaseous or liquid state okay let us have a look at paramagnetic substances now what is paramagnetism okay so in certain cases or in certain substances when they they are placed in the magnetic field they have tendency to align themselves parallel to the direction of field you can see over here this is the direction of magnetic field and this is the direction of susceptibility which is aligned uh, in this field so in this induced magnetic moment is aligned uh, parallel to the applied magnetic field so basically these substances they get attracted in the magnetic field and therefore the magnetic lines of force they pass through the substance rather than through the air now such substances they are called as the paramagnetic substances and these lines of magnetic field they are passing through the substance they do not avoid uh, the substance unlike um, uh, uh, diamagnetic substance in diamagnetic substance they these magnetic field lines they avoid the substance whereas in paramagnetic substance these lines they pass through the substance and such substances they are called as paramagnetic substances and the phenomena uh, is called as the paramagnetism now in such cases the induced magnetic moment is very small it is basically oriented in the parallel direction to the magnetic field and such behavior is shown by the substances those substances that contains at least one unpaired electron so what is the characteristic of paramagnetic substance that it has at least one unpaired electron now in absence of magnetic field they behave as a permanent magnet because the magnetic moment of these atoms they do not cancel each other and therefore they are permanent magnet now for magnetic substances the magnetic moment is a small positive that is not it has got non zero value and these magnets are aligned randomly in absence of the external magnetic field you can see over here 
uh, they are aligned randomly and they actually do not cancel each other and therefore they have got the positive definite value now on the contrary when we place the, the, such kind of substances in the external magnetic field you can see over here when we try to place these substances in the external magnetic field these atomic magnets they get aligned in the direction of the magnetic field and therefore they get attracted in the field you can see the direction of field so and this direction so they get aligned to the direction of field and they get attracted in the field so the magnetic susceptibility of such substances is positive and it is independent of the field strength and the magnetic susceptibility usually decreases with the increase in temperature so it is a temperature dependent phenomena as well so the temperature dependence of the susceptibility for paramagnetic substances is given by curie law and this curie law is represented like this so this this letter is known as paramagnetic susceptibility usually we represent it as a chi para subscript para so this para indicates the paramagnetic substance and this chi is the susceptibility so this is nothing but c upon t where the c is the curie constant so the curie law is obeyed in such cases to the fairly good extent by the paramagnetic substances that are usually these substances these are the magnetically diluted substance however for those which are not such material wherein the unpaired spins on the neighboring atoms they may couple with each other this phenomena is referred referred to as the magnetic exchange and materials that display the exchange behavior can usually be treated with modification in the curie law in the form of curie wave law and you can see this is a curie wave law so my chi paramagnetic is equal to curie constant upon t minus theta and this theta is nothing but wave constant so this is a correction by wave and therefore this is known as curie wave law okay similarly let us now see the ferromagnetic properties or ferromagnetism so uh, this ferromagnetic substances or ferromagnetism is basically a limiting case of paramagnetism that means the extreme paramagnetism where it exists we call it as a ferromagnetism now such kind of phenomena why do uh, such kind of phenomena exist such phenomena basically is observed when the substance contains large number of un uh, unpaired electrons and they are having the parallel spins and there are various groups of electrons with the parallel spins and these groups are basically called as domains you can see these are the individual domains okay and uh, these domains uh, they they are usually aligned very randomly in absence of magnetic field however when you keep this these kind of substances uh, in the magnetic field these domains they align themselves in the direction of the field you can see over here they align in the direction of the magnetic field now due to this particularly the magnetic moment and the magnetic susceptibility they have a large positive value and these substances they basically differ from the paramagnetic substances in their temperature dependence as well so what happens when we increase the temperature the magnetic susceptibility basically decreases rapidly up to a temperature which is called as curie temperature and above this temperature it shows a steady decrease in magnetic susceptibility uh, which is very similar to the uh, paramagnetism now for uh, ferromagnetic substance for ferromagnetic substance the curie law it can be written as this particular expression so ferromagnetic substance uh, susceptibility is equal to chi ferro is equal to c upon t minus tc where this 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 tc is the curie temperature you can see in this particular figure if i plot the magnetic susceptibility versus temperature so you look at this b and c curve this b curve it represents the paramagnetic substances and its behavior of magnetic susceptibility with the temperature so it it decreases uh, steadily uh, with the increase in temperature however in case of uh, ferromagnetic substance you can have a look at this uh, ferromagnetic uh, substance behavior over here we have the other behavior over here we will see in next slide uh, the behavior of ferrimagnetic substances when we will discuss the ferrimagnetism 
okay so what is ferromagnetism it is also called as anti ferromagnetism what do i mean so in some compounds basically the atoms they contains the unpaired electrons but they get coupled with the electrons in the neighboring atom they are having opposite spin now as a result of this it behaves as a diamagnetic at room temperature now with the increase in temperature what happens this coupling breaks down and the magnetic susceptibility starts increasing so the magnetic susceptibility increases up to a certain temperature which is called as nil temperature which is called as nil temperature and after this temperature the susceptibility decreases in the same manner as that of the paramagnetism you can see over here isn't it now such substances contains crystals having equal number of electrons with clockwise and anti clockwise spins however at atomic level the spins are not paired now for anti ferromagnetic or ferrimagnetic substance the curie law can be written with this particular formula which gives chi ferri magnetic is equal to c that is uh, curie constant upon t plus tn that is nil temperature okay so this way we can understand uh, the magnetic behavior their types and magnetic behavior so we have seen diamagnetic uh, substances paramagnetic substances ferromagnetic substances and ferrimagnetic substances and their behavior uh, behavior of magnetic susceptibility with the temperature so let us summarize so the types of magnetism and characteristics is summarized in this particular table so for diamagnetic usually the magnetic susceptibility in cgs unit per gram is up to the 10 to the power minus 6 uh it, it it will have the negative susceptibility and uh, it will be independent of the applied field and its origin will be uh, the field induced basically and uh, it has got the paired electron circulation similarly for paramagnetism this is the value of magnetic susceptibility it will be having the positive value we have already seen it will also be independent of applied field and it it will be um, uh, having origin of angular moment of electron in case of ferromagnetism we have got uh, again the positive value of uh, the order of 10 to the power minus 2 and it it will be dependent strongly on the depend uh, applied field and elect it is because of the electron spin exchanges and uh, the anti ferromagnetic anti ferromagnetic uh, substances they are also uh, having positive value of the order of 10 to the power minus 5 to minus 7 and it may sometimes or may not sometimes so it may depend on the applied field and the it is because of the electron spin exchange so the magnetic susceptibility is actually defined as the ratio of the intensity of magnetization of the specimen of material to the strength of the applied magnetic field which we call it as a h or which we denote as h so magnetic susceptibility k uh is equal to intensity of magnetization i upon strength of applied magnetic field h now uh, in this similar fashion uh, gram magnetic susceptibility can be obtained by dividing this magnetic susceptibility k by density of the material and it is denoted by this chi and subscript g okay this is known as volume magnetic susceptibility so it is magnetic susceptibility upon rho that is gram magnetic susceptibility okay however more useful term is the molar magnetic susceptibility that is known as chi m that is gram magnetic susceptibility multiplied by molecular weight uh, of the particular the sample so these terms we are going to use in calculation of certain uh, mathematical uh, calculations how to determine magnetic susceptibility by goys valence basically the sketch of uh, goys valence 
for the determination of magnetic susceptibility of the specimen is uh, represented over here. So, in principle, the uh, the principle involved in the Goy's method is that way a simplest one. Basically, it is the simplest method for determining the magnetic susceptibility value. This method uses the effect of applied magnetic field on the weight of the substance or weight of the specimen that we have taken. So the sample is taken in a Goy's tube which is suspended on an analytical balance. Okay, this is this is sub suspended in a uh, on an analytical balance. So this this here is the analytical balance and you can see the pan over here and this it is uh, particularly in the suspended manner like this in the hollow tube like this. So my specimen is here and it is suspended like this. Okay. So this tube is placed in between two electromagnets. Now these are placed such that the lines of the force of magnetic field it passes through the sample. Okay. I hope the geometry is clear. Okay, so it, it passes through the sample, isn't it? So this particular tube is placed in this magnetic field while the top of the tube basically is outside the magnetic field. So this can be, uh, this is uh, so as to get the field gradient uh, along the tube. I mean, uh, the partly it should be outside the tube and partly it should be inside the tube so that there will be a gradient of magnetic field across the a substance which is filled in the Goy's tube. Okay, so now change in the weight of the tube when the magnetic field is switched on and when it was switched off is basically recorded. And this change in its weight is related to the magnetic susceptibility of the sample. Now, corrections can be made for the effect on weight of the empty, empty tube. So these corrections, they will depend or they will vary on the um, tube types and the uh, uh, tubes which are case-to-case uh, -case tubes. Now this apparatus or the instrumentation, they consist, it consists of a Goy's balance and the Goy's tube basically. So this is known as Goy's balance and this is Goy's tube. And the assembly will be something like shown over here. Okay, so this thermometer will sense the temperature at particularly where it has been placed and it is usually kept hanging with the help of the nylon thread connection on a balance and this is particularly a glass rod and nichron stirred up and this is Goy's tube and this is particularly the center of magnetic field. So my tube is such that it is partly inside this magnetic field and partly outside this magnetic field and therefore the gradient can be appeared over here. So this is how the uh, sketch can be described and this is how the assembly is uh, being kept. Now how to measure the magnetic susceptibility or what is the procedure to be followed? So to measure the specimen volume, first we have to dry the Goy tube and first let us take the weight of uh, the Goy tube when the field is off. Let us call it as W1. Now let us take the weight of Goy tube when the field is on. So that is called as W2. Now the volume of water, the weight of Goy's tube with the distilled water, uh, if I take uh, water into it, it will be noted as W3. Now the volume of water will be given by W3 minus W1, isn't it? And if uh, this can be equ equivalent to uh, uh, the volume if, the, my, if my density is 1. And therefore, I can calculate the volume from this particular weight, assuming that the density is approximately equivalent to 1, isn't it? Basically, at room temperature, we can assume it is approximately equivalent to 1. So, this is uh, particularly equal to this volume of sample. Now, to measure the tube constant B, what we have to do? We, uh, we take to the dried Goy's tube we take usually the calibrant. Now these calibrant uh, they are uh, of the uh, say CuSO4 uh, or pentahydrated CuSO4 it can be used as the calibrant. 
now it can be added to the mark uh, which is given in the tube particularly there, there is a mark in the tube so it can be filled in and the weight is recorded with when uh, field is off let us call it as w4 and the same uh, weight can be taken when the field is on so that can be called as w5 now we can determine the susceptibility of the sample so to determine the susceptibility of the sample the gauze tube is filled with the given sample up to the mark and the weight is recorded with the field switch off let us call it as w6 and uh, when the field is on it, it will be called as w7 so now these weights we have now so the tube calibration constant can be calculated as uh, that is let us say tube calibration constant is b so my weight of calibrant taken will be nothing but w4 minus w1 because in w4 what we have taken the gauge tube uh, with the calibrant we have taken as w4 so w4 minus w1 is going to give me my weight of calibrant now later and uh, i have introduced the sample into the tube in the with the same fashion so um, uh, in the denominator uh, what what we, i i will see the change in the weight of calibrant uh, uh, that is w5 minus w4 so when field is on and field is off i can take the change in the calibrant multiplied by uh, chi g that is for the calibrant particularly so this uh, chi g uh, or uh, whatever calibrant we have taken it is particularly for uh, copper sulfate pentahydrate it, it is usually say of the order of 5.92 to 10 to the power minus 6 in cgs units uh, it can be uh, taken okay uh, and with the help of this particular value i can find out the chi g of the sample so change in weight of sample that is w7 minus w6 is going to give me the weight in sample divided by the weight of sample taken that is w6 minus w1 will give me the weight of sample taken multiplied by b that is the tube calibration constant which i have calculated so based on this b and these values we, i have noted i can find out this magnetic susceptibility okay the particular guys balance uh, example i mean uh, representation is given over here this is some kind of uh, balance which is represented over here this is a kind of sketch however in previous slide we have seen the actual sketch of the uh, magnetic susceptibility determination by guys balance so guys balance this is this is particularly the sketch which I, we have tried to represent over here so my magnetic susceptibility is actually the measure of extent to which the material is sensitive to the external magnetic field or susceptible to magnetization and it is actually the dimensionless quantity which can be denoted by chi now from the value of gram magnetic susceptibility which we have obtained by the guise method the value of molar susceptibility or molar magnetic susceptibility that is chi m we have seen that it has to be multi i mean we have to first find out the gram magnetic susceptibility that is chi g and if i multiply this chi g to the molecular weight i can obtain the uh, chi m that is the molar magnetic susceptibility okay so from the value of gram magnetic susceptibility multiplied by molecular weight we can obtain the molar magnetic susceptibility and this value is particularly used to calculate the effective magnetic moment which is given by this particular formula that is effective magnetic moment mu is equal to 2.83 into molar magnetic susceptibility multiplied by temperature to the power half so this particular two quantities molar magnetic susceptibility multiplied by temperature to the uh, half that is the square root of these two para uh, parameters we have to uh, take now from this particular uh, value we can actually write down this is uh, in other sense we can uh, write down uh, if we would like to re uh, relate this uh, particular uh, parameter that is effective magnetic moment to the number of unpaired electron i can relate it in this uh, manner that is mu effective that is magnetic moment effective magnetic moment is equal to n into n plus 2 to the power half this we have already seen by uh, when we have seen the magnetic moment determination using the number of unpaired electrons so now from this particular equation one can calculate the number of unpaired electrons as well so with this particular example if i 
know from the molar magnetic susceptibility i uh, know the magnetic moment effective magnetic moment and from the, the value of effective magnetic moment and using this particular formula i can calculate the number of unpaired electron uh, which are present in the molecule and therefore the magnetic susceptibility is an important tool to determine the spin state and the magnetic nature of the complex although the researchers uh, they are working in the field of coordination chemistry they uses the value of magnetic susceptibility to predict the properties uh, these prop uh, or predict the uh, properties of the complexes using this method uh, this this method is particularly uh, very useful uh, for this point of uh, application so friends we will stop here in this particular lecture and we will see the further aspect in the next lecture thank you